So, here we are at Hamcation. Sunday morning, yeah. it's kind of slow. It hasn't really gotten rolling yet, but there's a lot of stuff still here, folks. And one thing I would highly suggest is coming to seeing Chris at Buddy Pole. I have two of your antennas. Okay. You know how people complain about the Buddy Stick, how hard it is to tune? Yeah, I went to sometimes. Visit, <laughs> I went to visit my family in Wisconsin for Thanksgiving. Yeah. I brought it with me because it's great. You can get it on the plane real easy with it. They don't mind. Right. Right? So I brought it on the plane with me with my 705. The day I went to start using my radio, it was 17 degrees. You want to know how fast I got that thing tuned? Yeah, I bet Probably you did. about 30 <laughs> seconds. It was boom, right spot on. Yeah. And I'm back in the house getting warm while I'm trying to make some QSOs. But it's a, yeah. everybody, you know, you'll hear people complain about things. I hear it a lot. People complain about this and that. And all, or like Windows 11. It's like the curse, the bane of ham radio is Windows 11. It's not. It works. You just have to take your time and learn. The yeah, that's and that, it's a bit of a learning curve. And there's guys that get it immediately. Um, we provide a, a manual with all the settings. Right. But the ground changes, things change, and it can be off a little bit. So having an analyzer, um, particularly maybe before you go to the field right. or, or that field day event, whatever it is, just getting it up, uh, set, setting it up and uh, running through with an analyzer and just checking all those settings to make sure that they're I resonant. I have two of your products. I have the Buddy Stick at Pro and I have the uh, Buddy Pole. Pole uh, the Buddy Deluxe. Pole antenna. Buddy yeah. Pole Deluxe. Yep. It came with an 11-foot mast. I used it like that. It worked. It was great. Well, I ended up saying to myself, you know, this, this was a little higher. It probably worked better. So I got the 18-foot mast from you. Right. Day and night. Yeah. Day and night. Just from 11 to 18 feet. That thing, I got 124 contacts in less than an hour of parts on the air activation. Yeah. That's, uh, and I'm getting you know, Europe the... and I'm getting uh, North America, Canada. I got from Oregon to France. Yep. on that and it was amazing it just band it. conditions and you know it's really dependent on uh, which band it is so on 40 meters it's hard to get that horizontal dipole high enough some people talk about a, a quarter wavelength height as a rule of thumb others a half wavelength height um, on 40 meters you know you're talking 33 feet as a as a quarter wavelength so what happens is that horizontal dipole is lower than we'd like it uh, and the takeoff angle then is much higher uh, so it's not as good uh, for, for DX type of work. If you can't get that, I always want to run the horizontal dipole because it's just a better antenna, um, nine times out of 10 than, than the vertical. Um, but it suffers from that height above ground. So on 10 meters, on 15 meters, that's pretty easy to get that height, even with our, you know, with one of our masts. Right. Um, but I'm always looking for relative high points so I can run that horizontal dipole on 40 meters. That might be up at, uh, you know, it might be on a balcony, it might be on a rooftop, it might, anywhere where the ground slopes away quickly. I'm looking for those spots. Right. If I can't find that on 40 meters and I want to reach out and touch somebody, um, you know, DX type contacts, I'm going to I'm gonna change that from a horizontal dipole and I'm, I'm going to run that maybe as, a, as an L antenna or a lazy L vertical dipole or I'll just take the, uh, the radio wire that we provide mm -hmm. with the deluxe packages and I'll bring that out, elevated radial, and run it as a vertical antenna, low takeoff angle. I was going to just ask you about that. I think I asked you about that last year, about all the different configurations. Because I, I hadn't tried it because I didn't know where do you put the taps when you change those things. And you, you mentioned yeah. them, you leave them the same way. Hey, buddy. <laughs> I can see it. <laughs> you leave them the same way they, that it sets it for the dipole. And I, but then which one do you put vertical? You put the red side or the black side up vertical? I don't know. Yeah. Is it any yeah, is it, it, in no, particular? No, it actually matter? doesn't matter. Just a functional length and you're gonna, you know, it's a couple ways to tune this. An analyzer is the easiest way. Um, but another way with that vertical is we can just take that, that mini banana plug that we use mm -hmm. to plug into the, to the clips and then we can just rake that coil. We can turn our radio up on 20 meters, 14, 200. You're hearing the noise and then you're raking up and down and it's surprisingly easy to hear that loudest point, just up and back, up and back. Okay, that's it. That's the point right. to put the coil clip. And then you're set. Some people leave those coil clips on even when they pack the antenna away. I don't do that. Um, it's pretty easy to come back to those same points. You can keep a, we have the manual. You can make notes on that. Um, you can put a piece of tape on the side of the coil and have the markings. Mm -hmm. I have hash marks on my coil, so I just have it on my phone. It's well, it's 12. Uh, turn number 12 on, on the on the on the red side coil, and turn number uh, eight on the black side coil. And I'm going to go back to those points again. So. I got a suggestion for you. 
you give when you when you buy a pole or or a stick, either or, you get the little instruction sheet that shows the breakdown of yep. where everything's supposed to go, particular band you're using. I highly suggest you make little plastic cards. Right, we, and we've done that in the to past. Throw in there. <clears throat> that would yeah. be cool. No, I, or, I fully sell it agree. As a separate thing. Sell it as an add-on, yep. like five, ten dollars for these cards that you can hang on this on the tripod or something and have them right it, there. It makes it much more convenient. Because I constantly. Yeah spill something on the paper and I got to go print it out again. Right. <laughs> you know, I was, thinking, I was thinking of making it myself. I said, no, no, I'll, I'll mention it to you. Maybe it's something you could throw in, like another little add-on in your shop. If you if you want cards that show you the points, there, here you go. And yeah. the different configurations. Too. No, it's a good idea. We have done that in the past and they just yeah. got away from it for whatever reason. But so. that's, uh, all right. But I mean, yeah. this is a great antenna. And I don't, I've actually, I've actually got to work with Jason. He has the uh, um, hex beam. Right. And we did that up in Huntsville, and I watched them set it up from scratch, and it's it's a little tedious. I don't know if I'd use it for parks on the air because, I mean, I'm going to be there an hour. You know, to set right. it up for an hour is a little overkill. A lot of people want to sit and operate longer than that, right. and um, so if you're there for a few hours, right. uh, Jason... Right, picnic I, for the day or whatever, yeah. And when we do parks on the air at, up at Huntsville, up at Monsanto, come and see us in August. We'll be there the day before the event starts. Uh, he sets it up there. Yeah. And what's okay. nice is he's got a triplexer, so you can have like three radios yes. connected to it at the same yeah, time. Yeah, the D Expeditions are doing that. The Field yeah. Day guys are doing that. Um, that that's a great idea. As yeah, long so as multiple you guys could be operating using different bands on the same hex beam at the same time. It's, right. It's incredible. Yep. That's but it's a, a neat great thing little about product. It. Everyone I've, ha I've had, I love. I have it in my car right now out there. Okay. I have park I've got the yeah, stick it's, it's, and the and the pole. It's like a Lego set. You know, we we mix and match the parts to create different types of antennas. I actually um, saw a guy did a video, took the buddy pole deluxe, bought a few extra things and made a six meter uh, yeah. two, beam. Two or three elements, three elements six meter, six meter beam. Yeah. And I was like, damn, I can do that with this. I yeah. want to try that. You know, we just got to buy more pieces. We do a neat little uh, two meter 440 J pole. And just right from the parts, you don't need anything extra out of the bag with the rotating arm kit right. and the telescopic whips, 54 inches and 19 on the other side. And what an effective antenna up 18, 20 feet on our on our longer mast. Right. Um, whether you're running an HT or you know, yeah, 50 watt. Yeah, when I got wide. my buddy Paul, I also got the longer mast. I haven't used it as a vertical yet. I have the longer mast than the counterpoise. Yeah. I just haven't done it that way yet, but I have the stuff to do. It, I'd like to nice. get, even with the vertical, I like that feed point up high and I like to slope down that radial. Sometimes that radial, if you're on 15 meters, you know, that's a short radial. So our line winders have a, a hole on the end of it. Right. I tie some parachute cord. I bring it the rest of the way down to a rock or a stake or something like that. Right. Now I've got this elevated radial. It's almost like a like a, a, a dipole, like right. a lazy L dipole. dipole. Yeah, but you're up pretty high, and man, that's an effective antenna, I'll tell you. Right, right. So. Well, Chris, it's been a pleasure. I see you every year here. I see you up in Huntsville sometimes. You get there. So. I might get there this year. Yeah, we're talking about it. So. Wonderful. Huntsville's a great ham fest. Yeah, they, what do you call it? The friendliest ham fest on earth. They that's what it. I. That's what I keep and hearing. It, so. It's a lot of fun. The nicest thing about Huntsville is you're in the hotel, and then you just walk through a hallway, and you're at the convention. It's, well, it's great. It's all connected. No driving. No air, driving. air conditioned the whole way. <laughs> yes. Yes. Because it it's in August. It's a good thing. That's right. That's but there's a lot of good restaurants yeah. all around that hotel in walking distance. There's okay. actually a place you can go and design your own pizza and they'll make it for you the way you well, want it. They have some so. uh, breweries around there I might be talked into. Yeah, it, so. yeah. You all have a good time. <laughs> Chris, thank you so much for your time. Thank I you I hope you had much. a great show this year. Yeah, it's and, always uh, fun. I hope yep. he doesn't take anything home with him. So, yep. thanks for watching, everybody. KO4PDI 73.